Hello again, and welcome to episode 20 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. 20, also known as the Role Players Dozen. (laughs) (laughs) With that, yeah. I'm your host and GM, and the guy who's piping up is... Bryn Monroe. James Ross. Ben Meredith. Lydia Nicholas. That is Bryn Monroe's four names. (laughs) (laughs) And who do you play? I play uh, Sir Bertrand McGuffingham, a magnificent knight wearing a dinner service. (laughs) Uh, I play Hammond, the Halfling Sorcerer. Uh, Zolf the Cleric. I play Sasha Rackett, who moves like ball bearings that have erupted from a truck that crashed on a slight slope. Callbacks! <laughs> <laughs> so, picking up where we uh, left off last time, the party have been investigating the scrapbook that was found after the Edison heist. And you guys hit up my buddy Gusset and uh, got a bit more info about some rings that are flying around and yeah. uh, a little Found bit out of about a will. mysterious piece of metal yeah, and the mm. and the uh, true mm. adamantine. And then from there, you headed on to the, the British, British, Museum. British Museum, yeah, where and we did slightly less damage than government cuts might. No. Oh! Oh! Still going to be topical when this episode gets broadcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you come to this <laughs> actual <laughs> part of <laughs> 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 Can we just can we just one day just release an episode of you doing Lepidoptera and just not tell anyone? <laughs> <laughs> just, be, just there. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> We visited the McGuffingham Wing. You visited the McGuffingham Wing and exposed basically the. Just saying, when we finally see the Alta Han Wing, it's going to be way more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on, yeah, you guys accidentally, I say you guys, Brutal managed to accidentally release an evil forgotten for centuries, which you guys swiftly. The curator knew all about the evil. He was uh, like, oh, be careful, there's some evil in there. Oh, you've smashed oh, it. The <laughs> evil's oh, out. this evil on the mantelpiece. <laughs> I hope it doesn't fall off. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was classic Scooby. We do basically. Oh, We're back to being the Scooby it's gang. Chekhov's bandits. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, you guys managed to, oh, with a run-in with some, uh, let's call them lawyers, why not, um, from from Bertie's past, inverted commas, you guys made it and were out after being given a capsule to deliver to Paris, me, gay Paris. So oui. you currently are on the steps of the British Museum where the curators politely yet firmly closed the door. We've just been pressed digitised to not be stinky. Yes. I know a really good like tavern where they do, they do like grey soup. It's really good. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a, there's a. It tastes like not as strong as black soup, but not as weak as. No, white there's a really soup. nice restaurant just around the corner. I my shout, don't worry. Right, I mean, the grey soup has meat in it. Is that the place that does the mildew shakes? <laughs> and that's where we'll uh, jump ahead. We'll say that you guys had, for the first time in the entire campaign, an uneventful time. What? You made it through a meal. Well, for once, we're what? not eating eels. Yeah. Although the so no one attacked. I start a food fight. I start a food fight. <laughs> Brutal was not allowed in the restaurant. Mm. Oh. oh no. Wait, so they're going to make us tie an injured dog <laughs> up in front of the register? Uh, so uh, that's that's, what, that's what rich people do for fun. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Again, James, our target audience is <laughs> confused and alienated by <laughs> we'll political we'll commentary. <laughs> anyway, so you guys. Finish your meal and you head on presumably to the Tahans. Keeping simple, do you head to the one that you went to before to make your deposits or a different one? Yeah, the same one. I mean, the big. We'll go to the biggest one. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The local headquarters. Sure, that's fine. And you head into the bank. It is quiet. There are a few people talking to clerks behind um, sheets of glass and so on. And there's someone else sort of having a conversation off to the side. It's all very simple. So I'm just going to try and rob it while we're here, aren't they? That's the kind of thing that's been happening to us today. Well, yeah, I mean, that is kind of our luck, yeah. Right, so everyone be on guard for a robbery? <laughs> <laughs> Bertie strides up to the counter, knocks on the counter, mate. Hello, I would like to make some very risky and ill-advised investments, please. Do you have anything extremely precarious? Um, I'm afraid, sir, that you, you need a stockbroker. You see, we're a bank. What we do is we store your money and transfer it between different locations. Oh, so retail banking arm. Well, I, I would like to speak to a private banker in a small booth. Righto. Uh, if you just wait there, we'll arrange for someone. But, Bertie, what, do you really need to do that now? Not really, just doing it for show. But you feel like you, you lose the knack, you know, of uh, making large gambles with silly amounts of money. Isn't that why you have two very sinister lawyers on your back? I, I need to speak to um, the, the, the manager, please. Or, or the head of deposits, maybe? Oh, uh, they're, they're quite busy. Can I ask who's who's uh, asking? Hamid Al-Tahan. <laughs> yeah, no, um, that's fine. Uh, he looks up and then goes, 
Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> yes, uh, right away. Uh, hello, uh, sir. Um, would you like a drink? No, that's uh, fine. Don't, don't uh, yes. worry. I would. Uh, Water, please. Yes. Just some water. Okay. With a whiskey in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the clerk moves off. Uh, someone, shaking a little bit, hands everyone a, a single whiskey with a water in it because they just assumed everyone wanted the same thing. And then, eventually, uh, someone steps out, a very well-dressed halfling who sort of pushes to the people who are behind and closes the door, and then he suddenly all smiles. Hello. Mr. Tan, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. How, how are you doing? I'm I'm very well. I doubt you'll I doubt you'll know me. I'm a uh, Atsunub. Pleasure. Uh, Atsunub. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I had forgotten your name. I'm so. Oh, it's, I, I, it's quite all you right, know how sir. It is. I, mean, uh, I just didn't mean. I didn't we mean met once. To... You were too. Yes, obviously, a, a while ago. Um, how, how's things? Oh, excellent, excellent, yes, sir. Uh, is this just a... just, just wonderful um, shape everything's in it's looking oh, very, yeah. no, very ship efficient shape, yeah, ship absolutely shape, sir. very impressed by the job you're doing oh, well well thank done you. thank you very much sir I, I, we just need some advice to be honest oh um, I said oh please come come to my office sir i'm so sorry i'm it's, so sorry it's quite a delicate matter if you don't mind you know just um, that's fine being discreet we'll take you to the private that's fine sir. if you just give me a moment he goes off and <laughs> ducks i think i can hear ducks <laughs> The door opens, he leads you down a very plush corridor into a, a room. You're stepping inside, it's got a mahogany desk, but it's circular, there's no sort of like, this is the bank side and this is your side. Uh, lots of big comfy chairs. There's a bookcase in the corner and got a window that's just overlooking the street outside. And it's all just very quiet and calm and, and decorated in gentle hues. Sorry about that sir, yes, there. here we go, it's a bit better. So um, Lovely, what, yes, what, can, I, what so can I do for you and of, of course your guests? Uh, well, it's a bit of a delicate matter. Um, a friend um, recently left me with a um, a safety deposit key. Ah, well. But yes. the um, the circumstances were <laughs> less than ideal, and uh, well, it, you know, um, it was sort of a, a parting gift. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, it was. It was oh goodness me, I'm so sad, sorry. Unfortunately, the circumstances. Before you go any further, roll me a bluff check. I only rolled a six, but I do have plus eight, so 14. Okay, carry on. Um, and so, unfortunately, you know, with, with everything else that was happening, they didn't get a chance to tell me um, the, the details. And I know they wanted me to have it, but um, they weren't able to actually point me in the right direction. So all I have is the key, unfortunately. Mr. 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 Dahan, I mean, far, far be it from me to tell you how to do the what you what it is we do, but I mean you're you're aware that um, with, without a, a proof of identification for the key holder, there's not entirely a. I know, but I mean the thing is, is what I need to know really is 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 just where the, which bank the key is linked to. I, d I don't even know if it's one of ours or someone else's. I mean that's I, that's all I need to know, and that that will help me get hold of the identification I need. I'm I'm not entirely sure how ethical that is. Uh, I mean. Uh, you're putting me in an awkward position, sir. If I'm honest, uh, I, I do I do want to help, but I mean the 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 rules set down by your your own family actually kind of step in the way here. Uh, no, of course I I wouldn't want to put you in a difficult position. I wouldn't want to have to get anyone else in the family involved. No, no. Um, uh, hmm. Um, would would you yet happen to have anything uh, uh, anything we could use as an identification to prove that they give it you in good faith? That would work, uh, like a like a token. Uh, if, they, if they had a token from them, that would do it, or any, anything really. Yes, of course. I lie. Um, uh, perhaps uh, this note on this origami swan. Oh right, okay. As you can see, uh, at this point I leap into pomp and pageantry mode. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, it is uh, written in Japanese. Now, uh, this was uh, bequeathed by the Japanese ambassador, obviously a very good friend, Miss Altahan. I'm sure you're familiar with the long association of the Japanese Empire with the Altahan family. Close personal friends, you know. We all went to university together, you know. Very young chap, the junior ambassador, but a very sound fellow. You know, you might think that being in such elevated circles might might make a man difficult, may make him reputable, but no, a very generous man. You know, we were there.
there when the ceiling fell in and crushed him to bits, like all over the place. Now, I could paint you a picture with my words that would make your stomach turn and oh, it would turn sure. into a scene of mild peril okay, and yes, the peril right. would be sick so so ja- japanese <laughs> ambassador you're saying japanese ambassador right the the uh, the, the, the junior one. the junior attache yes, we, the, the, i told you the circumstances were were difficult it was uh, you heard uh, about the incident i that, did i did yes, um, so now of course sure. you couldn't have it publicized any wider because it would cause a well, difficult we, we were diplomatic in the papers matter. for saving okay. all those other people say, say no more say no more i'll i'll, I'll make some inquiries sir um uh, do 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 give me a moment he steps out so that went well well sort of i mean wish it had been simpler and you just said my dad owns the bank give me the details or i'll fire you no, I mean, that wouldn't work. Right, fair enough. Your bank, not mine. <clears throat> you know, he, he has to be, um, you know, he, he's right that he's just following the procedures. I mean, you know, I was hoping that, um, the, you know, he, he knew who I was and maybe that would, would have made things simpler. But he, I mean, he's good at his job and so he was just doing, doing what he should, should do, I suppose. But I'm sure he'll tell us, I mean, all we need to know is, is where the bank is. I'm not asking him to do to open anything or to without proper he paperwork. He returns with a safety deposit box in hand and a sheaf of papers on top and he uh, puts the safety deposit box down on the desk and goes, I'm, I'm so sorry, we're having a, a, we've been having an ongoing problem with our systems recently. I, I'm not entirely sure what it, what it is. Um, I'm sure it's nothing, I'm sure it's nothing. If you just give, give me a few more moments, I'm, I'm, I really, I, I wish I could be more helpful. Just give me a moment, please, sir. Of course. Of please, course. please. He heads off no rush and all. closes the door to again. So he leaves the deposit box. He leaves the deposit box on the desk. I'm, I'm going to look at Hamid like, I could, I could give this a... You want me to give this a shot? Well, I mean, See if the key works, but like, otherwise... Let's, yeah, let's just check the key. I mean, I thought it wouldn't be for this bank, but we'll just check this key quickly. The key doesn't work. Uh, Why I would he leave the deposit box? Get here? in there with my master words. It's tools. You can try. Yeah. Go for it. I will start reading the paperwork that he left. Uh, sure. I want to know what this deposit box is. Really. Go for it. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't do well. Fifteen. Fifteen. You don't manage. No. Um, reading through the paperwork that's on his desk, sort of leaning over and reading it upside down. It appears that a time release deposit was left in your name, and it was due to release a while ago on your birthday, but was retained for some reason. Anyway, he comes back in. Yeah, sorry about that, sir. Sorry about the delay. It sometimes happens. Um, now, you are saying it was for the Japanese attaché? The Japanese attaché. I'm, I'm very sorry to tell you, sir, that I believe there's been some kind of mistake. I, I understand, given the nature of the, uh, the well, accident at Edison. Yeah, yes, naturally, maybe, naturally. Maybe we ended up with... See, yes, I mean, that would make sense, because the, the Japanese attaché, he, he wouldn't have this key. This key's actually tied to Cairo. So um, there's, there's, there's no way that he'd be using that... Um, so no, of course, that I'm, I'm afraid that it may have actually been mixed up in the confusion. Oh no, um, we'll have to go you... back and find... Well, I mean, normally in this kind of procedure we'd actually take the key back and hold it um, to no, return no, it to the original. I'm, I'll have to hold on to it. I might need to go back and, and see one of the other ambassadors from, from Edison's and find oh, no, out I'm, how, I'm, how I'm, the mix-up happens. I'm afraid so. I, I, really, I, I really, really can't do that. So I, I mean... I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist. I'm really sorry, but it, it's very important. I can't possibly wish, risk offending one of the ambassadors. I, I understand that you, you have to follow the procedure, but you must understand that sometimes the, the, the uh, good relations of the family with, with important you know, personages all over Europe have to take Bertie, precedence. Bertie moves oh, in. And, sweating so much. Bertie moves in and closes the doors quietly to the room. <laughs> <laughs> A well, very sensitive diplomatic matter. Were there any keys in the pile of stuff that he left? Uh, no, he brought in just a deposit box and some papers right. related to that deposit box. Um, while he's talking, I'm just going to very, very quietly cast Enhanced Diplomacy on myself, mm-hmm. which does give me a bonus to in- Diplomacy or Intimidate. Mm-hmm. Sure, go for it. I'll say that he was too occupied with you know sheer terror at the thought of, of basically defying the CEO of the company, yeah. effectively. Um, well, well, I'd also no, like to have a go It's more like, a f- you, know, you know what I mean. I would also like to have a go at Intimidate, which is what I was leading um, into there. I sure. Think, I think I'll leave because I've got a plus six to Intimidate. Okay, I've just given myself a plus two intimidate. I'll see if I've, I've got a better one. I don't think I do. No, I've got a minus one. Uh, <laughs> Even so with actually, a plus two. Can I shuffle over to Bertie and just be like, you're doing it as well? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sure, go bit. for it, go for it. Give me okay. the roll. Uh, cool. Um, can I, can I pump and penetrate this? 
Um, I, I will allow you to. Yeah. Cool. Do you want me to add that out? So add that one to your normal modifier and then roll it. Cool. You get uh, plus two. One plus. Uh, add your plus two for enhanced. Sorry. Okay, so it's this roll plus nine. Yep. Uh, that is a nine eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Okay, carry on. A very sensitive diplomatic matter indeed. You know how important the game of diplomacy is. Do you have any idea of the ramifications of the rest of the world? If this matter were ever to become public, if we were not able to handle it discreetly, have you ever seen no, a city I, aflame? I understand. Have you ever imagined your loved ones trapped in a burning building? And Europe <laughs> is Bertie, that building. Bertie, and your family is the fire. I think you've made your point. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mr. Tad. What I need is a missive. That was all I was leading to. If you could just write me a disclaimer. And then I could have tied to your name, then that way everyone would know and it'd be okay. Yes, of course, of course. Of course. Okay. I just want you to know that, I, you know, I, 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 I don't hold, hold any ill will for the job you've done today. I, you follow procedure absolutely as best you can. I'm going to make sure I mention just how well you're running this, this, this <laughs> as, branch. As you're my, saying this, he's quietly like my parents, hand as shaking. As, he's dealing with some documentation. Uh, can I make a diplomacy roll to make him feel better? Just go for it. And I'm going to make another cringe check. <laughs> 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 I notice you make that ooh sound no matter what you roll. <laughs> the roll isn't important, it's the cringing. <laughs> uh, 22 on 22. diplomacy. Okay, as you, as you soothe him with your words, yes. he slowly you know, stops, stops shaking and um, passes over a documentation. He basically just says that you are accepting responsibility for waiving certain procedures, blah, 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 blah. It's all very straightforward stuff, yeah. um, which is fine. And it will allow you to take the key under condition that you are liable for the misplacement or anything that's yeah. in the box or blah blah blah. And he just hands it over to you. He's he's not shaking anymore, but he's just yes, that's that's fine. Of course. Thank you, young man. Have this whiskey. I <laughs> he, he, he 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 actually does start to drink it. Yes. I sign it, um, and then pocket it. Uh, no, so I I mean, it's, it's, to... it's fine. I'm I'm actually gonna travel to uh, Cairo in the near future, so I'll take it back to head office and file it there myself. Don't worry about it. Here, have this whiskey and Bertie passes him Hamid's whiskey. Just stood there holding a whiskey, just looking between the two of you, he eventually sort I of... just give him my winningest smile. I I I d I don't But uh, now we've got uh, the matter of that deposit box. As he's talking, the there's a knock at the door and he goes, oh, fuck it's I'm so sorry. Please, please. He goes, goes to the door. And then you just hear... They're talking halfling. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just hear... What do you mean he's here now? Oh, fuck. Give me two, two moments. Two moments. He closes the door. I'm very sorry, sir. Um, if, you, if you could all just give me a moment. Um, uh, uh, there there's just happens to be another personage of, of uh, notoriety. Uh, <laughs> notoriety. <laughs> there's another, another uh, VIP client. Of course, of I course. Have to go see. Please. We're, um, we're I, very happy to wait. We've got no... Uh, no, nothing to rush on to. That's that's fine. Um, he, he actually may be able to shed some light on the situation. He opens the door and st heads out into the corridor and disappears. Why on earth would whoever's turned up be able to shed some light on the situation? Oh dear. Um, maybe it's one of the ambassadors? Oh, that's going to make things complicated. Should we sneak out of here? Yeah, should we just take your spot deposit box and leave? Well, well, we don't know. It is I mean, your deposit box. I think we should wait. I don't want to... We've already given this poor... Poor you hear man. from the distance. Don't you know who I am? Do we know who that is? Not really. Okay, can, it's, we, it's can a, we attempt to work it out? Uh, you could give me a knowledge and ability. 14 plus 7 is 21. It sounds like a bad impression of Byron. A bad impression a of Byron. A bad impression of Byron. I'm Byron! I don't have time for this! Just... Give me a but for goodness sake, this is ridiculous. Last time we saw Byron, he was in bits. There's no way that he would sound like that in such hale and hearty health, given the massive amount of opium he'd have consumed to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the door and open it. You see, um, the manager is desperately trying to calm down. Someone who vaguely has Byron's bill, tall, very, very, like, portly, you can't really make out the details of the face just because of the lighting, but it's just making a big scene. I don't have time for this, please, I'm far please, too busy! Why don't you come in? I'm sure we can do something to help you. What seems to be the problem? The uh, face turns, looks, sees you, oh! and then he turns and just dashes out of the bank. Best charges after him in terms of pin him to the wall. Okay, everyone give me initiative order. No, because <laughs> this is a chase, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, so my, my initiative total is one. I've had just rolled 18. Yeah, so that is 19. That's your bonus, like your attack. Oh, right. This okay. is going to be interesting because I got seven. So That's impressive. You, You're really okay. quick yeah. off the mark. Yeah. Anyone impersonating, buy it! Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got six, so right. Bertie gets the jump on everyone. Yeah. Oh, I, I'd, I'd leaned back into one of the incredibly wait, comfortable Wait, wait, just to see. I rolled a critical one. <laughs> yeah, you see the dice they so know. That actually, it does know that I don't want to. The dice they know. Bertie's never noticed anything. Anything before, but if someone's impersonating Pyability, yes. oh, I'm on it like a <laughs> shot. <laughs> it's a very satirical one, this one. I'm yeah. not, oh, it's a different demographic today. Right. Okay. So, pseudo Byron dashes out. <laughs> or PB. <laughs> Bertie, you're up. What do you do? Right, uh, so I'm I'm going to charge after Byron. My what I'm attempting to do is knock him down so that we can like hold him down and question. Okay, him by Byron. you dash out to the doorway and you turn and you see that he's making a beeline for a carriage. Uh, I charge at the carriage. Is he in the carriage yet? Not yet. Okay, uh, I charge after him. Okay, Sasha, Bertie's dashed off after Byron. Uh, I put my whiskey down, which is why my <laughs> score was so low. Uh, it was very good whiskey, and then I run after him. Even with the delay, you are now pretty much overtaking Bertie. Am I at the carriage? I'm not yet. Carriage. You okay. are at least one turn away. I'm just running. Okay. Hamid. I also rush out the door, but mm -hmm. I don't do like a full run action mm -hmm. because the second I set up at the door and see that he's heading to a carriage, mm -hmm. I cast Acid Splash, Ooh. targeting one of the carriage's wheels. Nice! Oh, I was going to attack the wheels. So nice. we're, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a ranged touch attack. On a carriage, so it's not exactly a small target. Well, I'm aiming specifically for the wheel. 18. Total. That's a hit on the wheel? I don't do very much damage, but it is obviously acid based. Mm -hmm. One. I do <laughs> one damage. Okay. Pseudo Byron. It's my go. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you weren't partaking. <laughs> well, not, not in the chase. Okay. Picking up. up the remaining whiskies, yes. I will enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, very good. Right, in which case then? Roll, roll to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, that's a, cri that's a critical fail of enjoyment. You are no, that's cringing. No, that's a three. That's a three. You are cringing that's at your... Three. Yeah, you're dividing that three by three whiskies. It's not good. Oh, <laughs> no. Not I, just, I, I know it's good, but I can't enjoy the bouquet. I don't know enough about it. I'm a bit disappointed that I don't. <laughs> Really and back to the you know chase. Yeah. It's literally high, happening. exciting high speed chase. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I like the smash cuts. We're like run, 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 run. Smash needs some sniff in a glass. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and then back run, to the run, chase. Run, run, run. <laughs> yeah. So let's just call him Byron for the sake of speed. Byron. He uh, rushes up, and there is actually someone on the uh, carriage. It looks like it's actually just a cabbie, basically a handsome carriage. Without further ado, he reaches up, yanks the guy out of the seat, leaps up into the driver's seat, grabs the reins, and. Whoosh, starts pulling the horses away. Despite the acid in the wheels, which he doesn't appear to have noticed, yeah. the uh, carriage starts pulling away. Bertie, you're up. How far away am I from the carriage? If you were to sprint, I could give you a chance to leap and grab hold of it. I am going to sprint and leap uh, onto the carriage, the moving carriage. It's quite this exciting high-speed chase. Give in me a full reflex plate check. Armor. In full plate armour. <laughs> okay, so it's this plus one. Ah, oh, two, so three. So Bertie <laughs> charges after clang, 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 jumps. Misses it pretty significantly, you know, forgetting that you're Wang. jumping with full play, and just boom. So it's not really a jump; it's more like a. <laughs> yeah. And immediately, oh, like and you, I'm afraid, prone. yeah, you're 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 prone, face down. Right. Yeah. Oh. At which point, Sasha, Sasha, you're up. Runs along, and since Bertie's directly in my path, I'm going to yeah. jump off Bertie. Do it. Onto Do the it. Tariff. Give me the roll. 15, what would it be plus? Uh, it'd be reflex, it's just that I'm using uh, plus reflex six. saves. Yeah, that'll make it. 21. So yeah, running you uh, with Bertie face down, you yeah. jump, leap off his I back. leap off the back of his helmet. And clunk. onto the back of the moving carriage, yeah. and that'll take that turn. Yeah. Okay, Hamid. I jump onto the closest vehicle, mm -hmm. stuff a handful of gold coins into whoever is driving its hands, and say, follow that carriage! I normally would have said that it'll take you longer, but I've never heard anyone manage to fit in, follow that <laughs> carriage before, so I'm going to allow this. The, the handsome driver looks at it, goes, Pff, looks in the bag, drops the bag, and just goes, go, 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 and he's, he's urging them on. Okay, Zolf. You know, I've never really learned to appreciate this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I don't> know. <laughs> Smash got back to Bertie, you're face down currently and the carriage is pulling away from you. They're both speeding away and there's no chance I can catch them. Uh, on foot? No. No. 
I would allow you to try and get up onto uh, Hamid's carriage as it pulls past you before it splashes dirt in your face. Fine, I will do that. I will leap for Hamid's Another carriage. reflex save then. Eight plus one. You were pro. I, I reached oh, okay, down and attempted to help. Even That's with, a, help. Even with an eight, it's not enough. Four times more yeah. than you. So as the carriage speeds past you and Hamid leads out to grab you, you do another leap <laughs> and another face <laughs> for your dog. <laughs> and you just, Hamid, you just see Hamid, you pull your face out of the mug and just see Hamid pulling away with his hand now going, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, this is a fan art episode. <laughs> <laughs> she says while riding a carriage off into the distance. Um, Okay, so the, the carriage is speeding along, it's it's careening left and right, whoever driving, desperate to get away. They're also really bad at driving, mm. to the point where you're you know, clipping lampposts and things like that. A bit of the carriage has already snapped off as he's uh, clipped a lamppost. And then he uh, makes his way across and he's um, heading to a very, very sharp corner. And then he gives it a big, huge go with the reins and... The carriage just falls short of tipping, but nonetheless it's throwing Sasha out, so you're, you're, to you're due anything? to hit a lamppost, right. at which point I'm going to take a break there, oh. and we'll get back to it in a couple of minutes. Hello? Hello? Oh, I sit there. And, and talking to this? This? Right. Good. That is odd. Mm. Uh, yes. And you, uh, bring me a, a whiskey uh, with a rum in it. Yeah, lovely. Uh, uh, yes, so, um, good evening, peasants. I am Sir Bertrand McGuffin. Um, now, I've been told the tales of my feats of heroism, adventure, and utterly selfless daring do were spreading far and wide, arcing across the sky like lightning, rending the heavens in twain with their magnitude and ploughing into people's ears like a plough made of me being splendid. Now, the important thing is that I'm excellent and everyone should know just how excellent I am. So in order to set yet more ears a-quiver in anticipation of my every exploit, I would like you, specifically you, to tell your friends about how utterly super I am. Now, according to the technical busybods of Rusty Quill, and trust me, their bods are very busy, if you tell a friend about us and they subscribe to my tales of chivalric daring, then when they send us an email to mail at rustyquill.com with their name and the person who recommended it, they will have an episode dedicated to them. Now, I've no idea what that means, but it sounds jolly lovely. Anyway, once you've done all of that, all you need to do is pop the cash in non-consecutive bills into an envelope and send it along... What? 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 What do you mean they don't have to pay? Oh, I am literally never... Don't! You test me, sir! Fine, fine, fine. Well, recommend us to your friends and don't pay us and you still get your own episode. Now... If it excuse me, I have to have a serious chat with the underlings about the actual meaning of the word mercenary. And welcome back. So, Sasha, you are due to hit a lamppost. Right. Lung out, holding onto the carriage. You're powering towards the lamppost with your body almost horizontal because of the angle the carriage is going. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm strong. I'm going to pull myself back in and back onto the top. Do I need to roll um, a check? Give me a strength check. Gosh, Can't, if it. it's, it's reflex to let go of strength yeah. to pull yourself back in. Acrobatics to flip. Yeah, Oh. So if I'm horizontal, I think I would sort of flip myself backwards so I'm not pulling straight up. I'll, I'd allow acrobatics push to off, yeah. Push off the lamppost. Push off the lamppost, back in thing. Or and bounce. Just, yeah. just give me the roll. Okay, um, yeah, I want to describe the reason. So describe after you you've done the roll. Okay, oh, four you don't. plus eight, twelve. You will not be succeeding in this. Tell me what you would intend to do. Okay, well, as Sasha is thrown sideways, there's the lamppost. She sort of brings her legs in a little bit and tries to sort of push. As she goes right past this trying to push off it and force herself back in, but she misses by just a millimetre. Like, the feet sort of slide off, and instead of pushing herself back into the lamppost, she actually sort of manages to force her legs a bit dangly further, and her yeah. body is like a spinning top. And it clips you in one of your legs, dealing 1d3 damage. Ooh. I can roll it for you. Yeah. Oh, and you're dealing one damage as you just clip the lamppost, but the uh, carriage doesn't flip, at least. Hamid, you're up. You're currently following that carriage. It's still in sight. Um, the driver that you have is significantly better because, you know, it's their job and they get good at it. So you are making up time and you've just seen it careen around the corner, so you've just lost sight of it this second. Uh, I'll say there's another 20 gold if you can catch it. If I get a chance, I'll take another acid splash attack on it. But sure. Need to be in. It wouldn't be this turn yeah. because of the corner, but it would be next turn. Fair enough. Zolf, cut back to. 
Having finished both his whiskies, he wanders off in search for more. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Any more of the free drinks? <laughs> Come back to. Um, so Byron riding along, feels a clip, turns over and sees that Sasha is uh, holding on to the carriage. Dangling. Dangling, as it were. Probably noticed when I went, ow! <laughs> so he's, um, he's hurrying along, he's hurrying along. He, he looks left, he looks right. And then throws himself off the moving carriage into a carriage that's beside it, which is carrying basically uh, vegetables and stuff like that in the back, just a cart. And he throws himself onto it. They seem to break most of his fall. And that's, that's what he's doing with his turn. And the carriage is now careering wildly and unmanned. Bertie, you're up. Uh, so how far away are these guys in walking distance? Let's put it this way. You're going to make it back to uh, some commiseration drinks with Zolfast, then you're going right. to make it to the chase. Okay, right. Can I see any uh, just like horses that appear to be loosely tethered around anywhere? <laughs> Not really in this part of town either. It's mostly carriages. There is another handsome waiting and ready to go uh, like a bit further up the street. But that'd be the best you can do. There's no, it's no wild western like hitching posts. Right, and um, again, sort of a technical question: How would a ride, my ride skill, compare to that of a normal handsome cab driver? You would be probably better than the average cabbie. Okay, fair enough. Um, Even with his own horses, probably. Yeah. And what would a reasonable offer to a handsome cab driver be if I was to just? You tell me, James. You're asking out of character when you could be doing it in character. What I are you doing? Genuinely, have no idea what it would be. In Neither that would Bertie. That's <laughs> true. Just offered twenty gold to something. So That's go. Right. What do you do? Yeah, but I'm massively overpaying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, running up to the head, running up. Bertie runs up to the head and goes, clank, 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 clank. You there? You there? Handsome cab, cabby, cabby. Yeah. You there? How much for your cab right now? What? Well, it? The whole it, thing? The whole thing? Come on, time's wasting. We're losing daylight here. Hundred gold. No. Oh. Wait, 150. Give me 20. Okay, okay, okay. 140. 20. 130. 20. 140. 20. I'm going to leave this playing out. <laughs> <laughs> jumping to Sasha, you're up on a cut on a. You're jump, still holding on. Okay. But... <laughs> jumping off the back thing, because I'm me. guessing that a vegetable truck is slow and. Bleeding. You're on the opposite side to the vegetable truck. So the vegetable truck has been on the left hand side, you're currently hanging onto the right hand side. So you can't drop onto the same carriage. I don't, yeah, I just want to drop onto the ground. I miss the ground. Oh, sure. Give me an acrobatics check. 13 plus 8. Yeah. 20. Basically, the, the carriage starts tottering wildly. At the exact moment that it's at its most tilt, you uh, your feet just skim the ground, you let go and just run, yeah. and start killing the momentum just by running. It's very graceful, and just ahead of you, the carriage tilts <laughs> onto its side, <laughs> scraping along the pavement, and uh, slams up against a... <laughs> but they are sort of loose and tank off together, still hitched. Hamid. You are now back in sight of the carriage, which is now tipped over, and you see a carriage coming towards you, and in the back of it you see Byron standing up, looking and just seeing your face. I yelled to the cameraman, STOP! <laughs> uh, before we go careening past, and I will point my finger at Byron and just say, SURRENDER! <laughs> <laughs> Give me a bluff check. It's not a bluff. He doesn't know. I'm going to shoot him in the face <laughs> if he does not. I love that there's like you can't do anything. Magic missile. Ah, ah! <laughs> Twenty-two on the bluff check. Okay. The guy looks worried. I won't say what he does until his turn. Zolf, you're I'm back still up. Looking for that booze. <laughs> you, you, you encounter an underling who's holding a, a, a decanter and looking a bit concerned because you're just wandering around the back of the bank. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I will be taking this back to my meeting room. <laughs> I will take the decanter and stomp back off. <laughs> You're going to be doing four saves to see how drunk you are when everyone's back. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so Byron, seeing the threat, drops down, prone into the back of the cart, and that's all you uh, see. You just see the head go, and duck down. Sasha. Uh, I run off the cart and try and jump in the back. Easily. Um, it's moving so slow I won't even require the reflex save. It's just a slow cart. <laughs> Right, so I'm you just didn't think this through. <laughs> standing there, no, I've got a dagger. I climb onto the onto the edge of the thing and I flick out my daggers. I'm like, surrender! <laughs> <laughs> so when you hop up onto the carriage it's not a confident and yell that with your dual wielding um, yeah. daggers, daggers, you see Byron attempting to bury himself in potatoes. The second <laughs> that he sees you, he just he just hands up, dropping a potato from each hand, looking a bit dishevelled. His his hair is completely skew like falling off his head wick territory and he's just there holding up his hands. 
right, you, you, I'm, I've got you now. You better explain. Hamid, Hamid, why are we chasing him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sasha's not on the, uh, usually on the other end of this conversation. <laughs> We've got you now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what, what are you? You better come with me to the bank. Wait, we didn't want you at the bank. Hamid! No, no, we'll, we'll take him back to the bank for questioning. All right. But we'll tie his hands behind his back. I can do that. I've got, <laughs> I've got rope. You won't even need to do a check. Yeah, you, you tie it behind his hat. He just keeps going. Don't you know who I am? I'm Byron. By, by, Byron. I'm Byron. Someone please ask him what his first name is. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure my first name was always Lord, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> so, um... 20 gold. You... 20 gold. <laughs> <laughs> 20 gold. In this One, episode, Bertie Nine, Bertie I can't Bertie. go any lower. 20 gold. Ah! Which Bertie, one? we've got him. <laughs> oh, lovely. All right, fine, sorry, deal's off. I... Oh, I, what? I and yeah, you just walk off. April and, Fool! <laughs> Leaving the guy so nonplussed as to what I had. I gave my cabbie a total of 30 goals during Oof. that encounter. Goodness me. It's fine, I've still got loads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, you obviously reconvene with them marching Byron, in inverted commas, uh, ahead of them, back towards the bank. Ah, Byron, in inverted commas. He looks at you with just daggers. Just daggers. Wait, I've got all these daggers. Oh. Hey. Hey. He looks at you with cookeries. Just <laughs> cookeries. <laughs> he seems to specifically hate Bertie. Yeah. Ah, someone who's met Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys head back into the bank and there's no Zolf, but there is the um, person you were speaking to, the manager, just sort of coordinating. There seems to be a uh, police officer there already and he's going, yes, well, I don't really know what happened. So he was just here and then he ran off and I don't understand what's happening, but I, I'm sure... Oh, there they are, there they are, there they are. There's him, that's him. Good afternoon, officer. We've 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 caught the uh, the impersonator. I'm by <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> What's your first name, and where are your swans? <laughs> he kind of makes a go for Bertie, even with his hands tied up. He just kind of throws himself forward in the vein. Oh, attempt you to... miss me. Ah, oh, <laughs> sucks to be you. Now. <laughs> As he's doing so, like the wig on his head flops further forward, the uh, mustache that he yeah, has is we sort of slipping. Him. Yeah. Just a grab yank, grab yeah, yank. Was just like, press the digitation. <laughs> Swipe any Ooh. makeup off his face. Oh, it? so it's just like wig, just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything fall, flops off and uh, thingy. And then. Thematically, was it Mr. Willikers, the janitor, all along? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know it's becoming is, more and more like Scooby Doo every who, who episode. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know who that is. I'm it's not the guy. I know who it is. <laughs> yeah, it. No. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, you all recognise yeah. him as Figus, wearing a fat suit, and he. It's like costume-wise, he's made a decent attempt, and like he's 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 fatted up his cheeks and stuff, and you see like fake jowls drop off as you press the digitate it off and yeah. stuff, and he's just there, just glaring daggers at Bertie. Bertie picks up the false moustache from the floor, puts it on his hand <laughs> like that. So, you know, he, he can do that. It's going to be very difficult to describe for listeners. The little th- curled you... fist thumb mouth Curled fist thing. thumb mouth thing. Yeah. Does that, and he goes, uh, and Bertie goes, Oh, I'm Mr. Figgis. I'm going to impersonate Lord Byron and try and get loads of money out of a bank using the worst disguise I've ever seen. I didn't know Pretty good disguise. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, normally I'd shoot you down, but, but we've established Bertie's amazing at disguises <laughs> on random <laughs> occasions. <laughs> um, yeah, figures, figures just, just glaring. I'll have you. I will one day. I don't know how, but I'll have you. And then you'll be like, oh no, it's you. And I'll be like, yeah. And then I'll have you. Oh, I'm figures. I'm really terrifying on opposite day. Um, <laughs> uh, officer, I suggest you charge this man with... Um, Impersonation of a member of the nobility. Very attempted, poor impersonation. Attempt, attempted impersonation of the nobility. <laughs> attempted fraud. Um, assault. Um, and breaking and entering from that previous time. And, and all those potatoes that he's mussed up. <laughs> <laughs> Potato assault, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. Carousing with vegetables. The, co- the copper just gives him a way idea. He just clamps him and then he just starts walking him off and he says uh, I'll be back later for any witness statements I've got enough from the manager but if anyone wants to add anything he just marches him off nice and quick the, the manager's there going oh goodness me that was exciting wasn't it oh um all in a day's work oh clearly um I have no idea that 
Do you know where our boss is? Back, back in the meeting room, I guess. Oh, uh, probably oh, on his way. Presumably. Here. Give me three fort saves. I shall. First one. I shall do them all at once. <laughs> Don't you get some sort of bonus of being a dwarf because you're alkies or something? That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a bonus from being an ex-sailor. Uh, that's careerist. <laughs> uh, and Give me the rolls. Uh, it, but it might also be true. Uh, that's a critical success, a critical failure, <laughs> and an 18. <laughs> How do we deal with this? Presumably the success and the failure just cancel each other out. No, no there are critical success no. and a critical fail. We're which means not it, playing drunkenness, yeah. and you can definitely okay. have both within minutes. Yeah. <laughs> not that we'd know. Unless, wait, listeners. wait, I'll, I'll give these to you, and you can order them in any way you wish. So, here's what happens. So, Zolf, the first one that uh, Zolf drank, oh, that was not much to it. A lot of water in that one. You're like, eh. It's probably weak. So then you uh, have the um, next one with the water. Oh yeah, it's quite weak. So you eventually, with the decanter, you made it back and you're like, well, there's nothing to it. Have necked a bunch and gone. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to be taking a minus. There are rules for alcohol, I don't like them. How many minuses are inherent in this You're going to be taking <laughs> a minus three. To all charisma rolls, but if you get a natural one, you are in so much so that's trouble. So minus six. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on a minus three for your charisma rolls, and everyone uh, comes back in with. <laughs> well, how's his dex? Oh, uh, yeah. uh, to clarify, he'll be taking a minus three. Let's say to everything. Yeah, go on. I, I, I apply that to everything. Yeah, go on. Maybe a minus six to, inter- uh, to wisdom. <laughs> I realise there are rules for alcohol. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, you've got a minus three to everything. <laughs> um, so the manager comes back in with you guys and finds the off there. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to leave you here on your own. Don't worry about it. I'm having a great time. Uh, okay. okay. Um, yes. Well, that was that was something. Um, yeah, uh, that missive. Yes. Um, given the circumstances. Uh, yes. Uh, Is anybody else? It's a table. A bit wobbly. Tables. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting it, they're meeting it, kind of wobbling it, going, oh, I'm pretty sure the table's a bit wobbly. Solve, don't get, but he's started on tables. What? No, he's, oh, um, oh well, what? Um, table murderer, so, look where he is, yes. So okay. I, I've, I've, I've totally lost my track. We were, um... Uh, you, you just, like, given him uh, given him the key and, and we'd all signed all the forms and everything was fine. You were just going to open this safety deposit yeah, box one for him. Give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> To just bamboozle him to the point where he's that flustered that he's just going to go with it. I think my diplomacy is not good. Uh, yeah, minus one. Go for it. Three minus one. <laughs> <laughs> I will roleplay that. Go it's you. It. So that box, you got to, you know, what the um, open thing is. So well, opening I, is the thing that you should I do. I don't know, I don't know what's going on here, but I know I'm convinced. Look, you look, you look rubbish at what you do, so you should prove it right by doing this for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hamid has his head in his hand. What goes, the, why, why don't the rest of you just wait outside while I just wrap up here? But Sasha was doing really well. <laughs> what she said, basically. I just chased down a criminal. Just, guys, what did you do with your life? Just wait outside, please. <laughs> just, please, please, please is that what you just were, wait outside. Is that what you were doing? Well, just, I just got... Bertie withdraws his sword and eyes the table. <laughs> did, you, did you have... Did you can, have can, a, a, a... We have a ton Everybody out! <laughs> okay. All right, Squeaky with short arms. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do what you say. So for you, have they poisoned you, Zolf? <laughs> I poisoned myself. For the sake of things <laughs> keeping moving, I'm going to say that... Bertie's only ushers both about. <laughs> yeah, room, cool. Glowering backwards at the Both table. Sasha and apparently poisoned? Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, I have uh, uh, Yeah, the door closes and the manager goes, Oh, um, I'm... Yeah, sorry. Uh, right, um... He ends up actually just passing the missive over to you anyway, along with the key. Right, yes. Um, the box, yeah. Um, th- this was uh, left in our possession uh, on, a, on a time release uh, for your birthday, but then we um, we never got the go-ahead. Uh, we were So we, we just sort of sat here, but we th- I thought, well, since you're here anyway, you might might want it. It's in your name. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, t- I'll take a look then. Uh, right, he, he plucks out a key that he had on this person, opens it, and then hands it over to you, like, unlocked but not opened. Uh, I open it. You open it. There are a pair of sort of shimmering pearlescent tubes of material in the bottom and then a note in an envelope put, put on top. I read the note. Written on it is, uh, Our dearest son, we know that you have some troubles, but you know it means so much to us how you stick at your studies, even through all of the problems. We love you very much, mother and father. And then a little kiss. 
I try really hard not to cry. Crashes and laughter from the outside. It's all that's insane! <laughs> I know, I can just take it off and wave it around! <laughs> Dude, that is sick! <laughs> <laughs> and cut back to the interior where the manager's just, uh... I hope it's, it's nothing bad. I, I, I have no, no idea. No, it's, it's fine. Thank you so much. I, oh, I, do, well. I do really appreciate it. Well, if there's anything else I can do for you, do let me know. No, no, you've done more than enough. I, I, I really appreciate all your help. And th- thank you for, you know, uh, understanding that sometimes not, not every um, situation can be covered by the existing procedures. Right, well, uh, I hope, I, I, if there's anything else, you, you know, you've he really, opens the door and just You've starts. really been wonderful. I, I'll give him a very warm, friendly handshake. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I give him a very warm, friendly tip. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure, he, he opens the door and just slowly ushers you out, and everything seems to be settling down, and all of the clerks uh, are I handing out. I assume that these things are the magic item we previously talked about. Indeed, would you care to identify them? They are called Sleeves of Many Garments. Mm, what do they do? Uh, basically, I slip them on over onto my wrists, and I can instantly transform my clothing to anything I want it to be. The best present a parent could give a fanciful child. Oh. Definitely still at university. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, you head outside, and yeah, Zolf's looking a bit the worse for wear. Well, I currently have my peg leg off, and, <laughs> and I'm hopping around fencing with it. And that was, that was what I could take off and wave it around. Uh, <laughs> it's, I'm fencing with Zolf, Zolf, holding my, my rapier by the sharp end, so I'm just waving the pommel. Zolf, 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 sing us a pirate shanty. Okay, guys, uh, time for dinner. What? Dinner. Oh. It's coming on to 6 p.m. at this point. Yeah. All right. Wait. I'm just. I know. Uh, he will attempt to walk, forgetting that he's taking his peg leg off. Uh, fall flat the space. <laughs> Ow. So I'll leave it there with Zolf uh, stumbling around without his prosthesis whilst uh, everyone else is either making a laugh or, or Hamid's just there. Hamid. Being embarrassed. Hamid, look, is this, look, isn't it funny? Hamid, Hamid, look, look, he doesn't Even have his leg on. Even you can Hamid. tell my face is super <laughs> unimpressed. I'd like to have a little bit of a lie down here. And we'll close it there. So thanks again, as always, for listening. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. And I hope that all of your dice rolls go well, etc. I need a better sign-off. Bye! <laughs> Sorry about the sign-off. Bye! Bye. Bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at RustyQuill.com. Thanks for listening. Test, 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 test. I'm afraid you have not passed the semi-finals <laughs> for the National <laughs> Rapping Championships. <laughs> Can't rhyme word with itself. That's how rhyming works. Through corridors and automatic... Oars. Automatic oars. <laughs> automatic <laughs> oars. Just to row to you. Just to <laughs> sail the way through. Okay. Um... Let's open the windows, Alex. No! This is why. That was impressive. You opened it. You you did this! And wakeful. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasant in here. Actually, that is a point. It's, Can't it's be having that. probably quite important that we do so we don't get into a soporific funk. Yeah. Mm. I was soporific funk and this is on your own. <laughs> yeah. Funky lullabies for babies. Welcome to the soporific funk. Funkabies. <laughs> Come on, baby. Right, I've got to listen to me again. <laughs> Test one, <laughs> test two. Baby, let's soothe that colic away with the next track round. Test one, test two. I've got a wing. You've got more of a torso, I think. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, I'm going to have a wing and another wing because of being a dragon. Oh, You're not yeah. getting there. No, 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 moving. No, no one. <laughs> no one understands. You guys, action <laughs> reference. Like, you're like, yeah, you got a wing. I got the breasts.